And welcome to the uh, NVIDIA Omniverse uh, Twitch channel. Uh, we are very excited today. We do these, try to do them about every Wednesday. This is actually exciting. This is the first time we are doing a series that we started talking about months ago called Community Spotlight, where we will talk to one member of the Omniverse community and really dive into uh, their background as a developer, user, artist, um, find out about um, their kind of path to where they got today and where, what they're looking for in the future and uh, always looking to highlight uh, people. So let us know if you'd like to be on one of these on a coming show. Uh, but I am super pleased to also have included with us here. We have a few people, obviously, as you can see. So we've got uh, Ashley, who's a 3D artist here at NVIDIA. Hey, Ashley. Uh, we've got Wendy, who is our awesome uh, community manager, forum queen, <laughs> also an artist. Uh, Hi, everyone. And then, the uh, the man of the hour, Jeremy Lightcap, who is our uh, original Marbles contest winner. As you can see his image right there behind me. Uh, so he won <laughs> our inaugural contest for uh, uh, Create with Marbles, where we released a, kind of a, a package of assets and let people kind of go crazy with it. Jeremy, as you can see, uh, did something that was really innovative, very unique. Um, lots of cool, it looks like a movie scene. Yeah, um, we'll talk about that more in a minute. Um, but yeah, so welcome, everybody. Yeah, hey, how's it going? <laughs> Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, I'm excited. So this is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. So so the format for today is going to be a little different. So today is really just meant to be more of like a casual hangout. Uh, so talk about questions, uh, to, uh, 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 what uh, tools you're using, any kind of workflows, um, and kind of really kind of just uh, if we can uh, share some knowledge or tips that would help other users. Uh, the really cool thing about today's uh, specific um, guest is that, um, well, both Ashley and Jeremy have a, a big history with Blender 3D. Um, and uh, Omniverse just announced uh, and released support for Blender. Uh, so it's great timing to actually dive into that a little bit as well today. Um, and actually on that point, let's do two quick things really quick. So let's define what Omniverse is for anyone who might not be familiar with Omniverse. So uh, NVIDIA Omniverse is uh, NVIDIA's open platform for real-time simulation and collaboration. It works with many of the existing tools that developers already use. Uh, we have a great list on our website uh, and more are coming. For anyone who attended our user group a couple weeks ago, we gave a sneak peek of the roadmap, so we'll post more details on that. Uh, but I can tell you that uh, Blender uh, was a big one. We also have Houdini coming uh, not too far, so that'll be really exciting. Um, and then specifically with Blender, uh, since uh, uh, I'm with three artists, I'm outnumbered here. So with three <laughs> artists, I would love to hear from you. So uh, tell us, tell us about like what Blender is and why, why is this, why is this such a big deal? Um, sure. Yeah. I mean, I guess uh, I'll go um, since Blender is really the only thing I've been using in the past uh, two or three years. But yeah, I think Blender is just this like weird Swiss army knife that kind of does everything. I mean, you can model in it. Uh, animate, rig, composite. It even has a video editor in there. Uh, you know, you can simulate cloth and water. Uh, it's it's kind of strange because there's like I really don't know what it can't do. You know, they've even been working on this grease pencil thing that's kind of turning it into a bit of like a drawing uh, 2D animation program. Um, but it's it's just such a fun program. And the best part is it's free, so you never have to worry about you know, paying subscription fees or, you know, navigating uh, costs uh, around, you know, what you're doing or how you're making money with it. It's a super fun tool to use. Yeah, that, that's cool. So, uh, and Ashley, you've been using it for a while as well? Yep. I've been using it probably for two or three years now. But I actually started as a Maya artist. And um, Basically, Blender is a lot like like Maya in that way, except it has a lot more tools. So it's really, really nice for illustration and for kind of visualization stuff. It's a really amazing tool to get started in if you ever want to dive into 3D or if you're curious about how to bridge illustration with 3D. Uh, it's a great tool. Very cool. So uh, all right, so we're gonna we're gonna probably circle back to Blender in a few minutes, but just to get uh, kind of top of the show. Um, Kind of uh, overview uh, out of the way. Now we want to dive into uh, Jeremy's background. So Jeremy, you and I have actually uh, we've uh, hung out quite a bit uh, since we first met uh, yeah. from the original uh, Marbles contest. And 
uh, we had our, a great show that Wendy hosted last week with uh, with Michelle Liu on uh, that uh, had several of the guests were Marvel's uh, submission artists. Um, so thank you for joining us for that show. You also did a tutorial, an awesome tutorial on creating your Western scene. Uh, so you've been really helpful to the community, very, very positive uh, and supportive also. So thank you for all of that. Yeah, um, and yeah, I have to say, course. I've been really, really impressed about all, uh, our whole community, especially on the Discord server. It's a lot of fun. So people should definitely you. jump in. Um, but Jeremy, so um, uh, you also recently got married. So congratulations on that. I did finally. Yeah, we had to postpone our wedding uh, twice because of, you know, the global pandemic, oh, but we're finally no. hitched and it feels good to have <laughs> that behind us. It feels great. I'm, I was so tired of using the word fiance. It just felt like more information than I needed to share. But uh, I can say wife now, which is much simpler and, uh, and cleaner. Yeah, so, <laughs> it's, it's good. And where in the world, where in the world you. do you, uh, you and your wife live? Uh, we live in Philadelphia. Uh, we've yeah. been here for uh, for uh, twelve years ish now. So uh, been here quite a while, and you know we really love it here. And um, the weird blessing in disguise from the whole past year is I thought I was going to eventually have to move back to LA to find work in this industry. But so many people are working from home now, and we're, we're realizing that, oh, we don't actually have to go to an office to get a lot of work done. So I feel lucky that I've been able to, you know, have a bunch of opportunities come my way without having to relocate to, to the West that's, Coast. So that's awesome. Nice. Yeah. Well, congratulations. And uh, and so tell us a little about your, your start as an artist. Like, uh, um, sure. how old were you when you started, you know, realizing that you that's what you wanted to do? Yeah, I was just, I was really into art uh, when I was in like high school. Um, and then, you know, we had a career fair and uh, I was like, oh, I wonder what it takes to become a fine artist. And I, I looked and it, it, it literally said uh, fine artists typically have to work in cafes and restaurants to supplement their income um, and they do it for the passion of it. And that made me so mad. And I was like, why would anyone want to be a fine artist when, you know, you're, the success of your work relies on somebody with a lot of money finding your work interesting. That just didn't seem fair. So mm -hmm. I abandoned the idea of art and started studying music, uh, studied classical guitar for a little bit. Uh, and then I kind of circled back into art again when I was about 22 or 23. And I, I found that that video game art was a thing, like concept art, and it blew my mind. And I thought, oh my God, that, that's something worth working toward. But man, when I started out, I don't have anything to share right now, but my uh, my really early stuff was pretty bad. Actually, let's uh, let's just go down this rabbit hole of Instagram. Yes, I might be able to like get into some really early sketches um, to show you guys like where, where I started. Um, but, oh yeah, those yeah, look so... awful, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, uh, it was it's a weird road when you're starting out because you like don't know like what's what's good and what's bad and you're trying to figure out like you know how how to make images look good it's it's a lot to to focus on oh uh, this is one, my first oil painting of my mother uh she was you know uh patient enough to let me take that photo and work from it um so yeah i, I started doing all this stuff when i was like you know 22 and 23 just studying and studying and uh, i tried to get into art center which is a really famous school and i got in there it took me like four years to get in and then a semester after i was in there i realized i couldn't afford it and so i had to stop going to art center um and that kind of just you know bummed me out so i took a break from art for a year and then i started you know thinking like okay um i really want to do visual development and so i looked at around the portfolios of other artists that i was really into and i said i'm just going to work on this until it feels like it's something that they did and you know i didn't have the the schooling to like help guide me and so all i had was like youtube and books and so i really just poured my heart out into this little project which is a story called farewell to the master it's an old story from like the 50s i believe but the idea is that this robot and this alien come to earth and uh the human gets you know murdered but the robot uh is kind of uh, alive and you know comes to life and you know uh, I, I had my own little spin on it but it was a really good learning opportunity and it was kind of where i started messing around with 3d and so i used sketchup and then after that i found uh, this guy vaughn ling or heavy poly and he had a really cool tutorial on how to use blender 
-hmm. And once I started learning Blender, like everything just uh, started uh, to click. And I kind of realized like, oh, 2D really isn't what I feel most comfortable doing. And But I kind of had this idea in the back of my mind, like, no, you have to do 2D. Like, that's what you set out to do 10 years ago. Um, and then I kind of like let go of that. And as soon as I started playing around with Blender, I just I just had so much fun. And uh, yeah, like a lot of work kind of started coming my way. But it's cool because like I still haven't given up on the 2D stuff. Like I'll occasionally, you know, practice it because I think it really helps your 3D. Um, it really helps you create, you know, good, strong compositions. And it just makes your 3D work so much better. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really healthy to do a blend of both. Um, and this actually, I, I really got into to VR after the Blender stuff. And so this is a painting that was done like by hand. So everything in here is a brush stroke in Quill. Uh, but then I took it into Blender and I was able to kind of, uh, yeah, just like oh, create wow. a little bit of depth of field and make it look like this cool hybrid of 2D and 3D. And I, we just live in such a cool time. Like there's always just some new cool software or technique out there. And uh, you know, you can, you can just do so much stuff uh, you can just do so much that you couldn't do before. I feel like before it was like whatever you could do with oil and a paintbrush, but now, you know, there's VR and Blender and, and Omniverse. I feel like Omniverse is kind of the the next uh, the next step in, in software and, you know, like the next milestone. Uh, but yeah, so that's kind of my background. And again, here's more oil painting, never really gave up on that. Uh, uh, it's It's too messy and takes forever, so I don't do it very often, but it's it's a fun thing to whip out once in a while. I mean, amazing um, stuff. But, you know, one thing that, that jumps out at me, like right mm -hmm. away, looking at a lot of your stuff, including your Marvel submission, was you're you're like a storyteller. Mm -hmm. um, your mm -hmm. scenes have a very much kind of like you want to know more what's going on in that scene. <laughs> is is that uh, is is that part of like what your um, you know interest is? Yeah, yeah. I think um, you know, I. I think a lot of people uh, when they're starting out are in this mindset where they're like, I, I really just need my break. I need to get a job to help me figure out how this industry works. And I had a really rough go. I one year sent out 40 applications to like 40 different studios and I never even got like a no thank you. Wow. And that made me feel like, well, what am I doing trying to work with these people when I could just start writing my own stories and start you know, making my own projects. And so that's kind of where the storytelling stuff came. Like I was t tired of waiting to help other people make their stories come to life when I thought like, wait, I have, you know, all these great ideas myself. Like, why can't I just, you know, start painting and, and making 3D projects that have, you know, uh, my, my own story that I'm interested in. And that's kind of like how most of, I think that's when my work started to get a lot better is when I started realizing like, oh, tell your own story. and the work will have a lot more depth to it and people will be more interested and they'll stick around longer when they're looking at, you know, what you're up to. And that was like a really big kind of like epiphany moment for me. And so, yeah, any project I do now, uh, including the submission for the, the Marvel contest before, way before I even got into making this, I thought like, well, what, what could be a story here right now? And I thought, you know, these little ink bottles look like, you know, cowboys, uh, maybe I could have them sitting around in a town and then i thought oh this marble looks like a hot air balloon maybe it's crashing through the city and you know the story kind of unfolded as i started just playing around and and uh thinking like what what could happen in this in this town that would be visually interesting um so yeah story is very important for, for what i've been up to lately and so you you've, you've it sounds like uh, over the years you've uh, the evolution of tools and the more advanced kind of features uh, can let you do more. That, yeah, uh, that it lets really you do more you without, the, without the team, you know, like before I feel like you would have needed like a, a bunch of people to, to work on something like this, but you know, everything works so fast and you have access to, to so many resources that you didn't have even five years ago that I think, and I, I think uh, uh, Ashley will probably agree with me, Back in the day, being a generalist was frowned upon, and it was something that instructors were like, don't become a generalist, focus on one thing. Um, and a lot of clients I've had lately were like, oh no, like we, we really need generalists. Like they're, they're like the people that, you know, really run the show. And so, um, yeah, I, I think it's, it's I, I think more people should be, you know, it's just try and learn about all this cool new technology because it's so much fun once you get past that, 
that awkward learning curve of trying to figure out how it all works. And what would be your, your advice to uh, to any uh, any folks just starting out as an artist that may be watching? How what do you think the best thing for them to do to help improve themselves? And um, yeah, I think it's I would probably just sit down and just really ask yourself like, what am I really interested in? And and try and give it like a fair shot. Like I originally thought I was really interested in in drawing, and then I tried painting and I was like, oh, I actually like painting more than I like drawing. So I'm gonna try this for a while. And then I thought, wow, like those spaceships look really cool in 3D. Maybe I could play around with 3D for a little bit. So I think to get better, you should like try and do the thing that you're interested in, but don't like block out all of this other really cool stuff happening around you in like the 3D space, because 3D is really blending very well with 2D, you know, like when it comes to VR and the grease pencil and blender. Um, so I think it's just like, just experiment with with all this great technology that's around you because I, I again think learning 2d fundamentals really helps your 3d and knowing how to do 3d can really help you like paint a picture like you could block out you know a big scene and then draw or paint over it um so my advice would be to just just try and learn uh all that you can about all all this stuff happening in the industry if you're looking to get into animation that is. yeah <laughs> <laughs> and for and for resources like what what has been your go to to learn different things? Do you use um, uh, like online? You can look at videos on YouTube. And... Yeah, it's uh, so I have a. Hmm, trying to think, uh, it it's really it comes down to YouTube. YouTube is like ninety percent of what I use. Like occasionally, I'll have to go through like the Blender PDF handbook to look up a very obscure setting that I can't find, but. It's so strange, like if you just type in like Blender hot air balloon animation or Blender like uh, ocean simulation, like there are so many people who have already like created tutorials on most of the things you'll want to do. And then as soon as you, as you're learning how to do those things, you'll come up with your own ways of developing and learning, you know, what you need to get done. So um, yeah, I would say just, yeah, go on YouTube. It's it's a really great source for, for learning. <laughs> And Ashley, does that uh, does that kind of line up with what your trajectory was too? And uh, kind of does all this sound very familiar? Yeah, um, I mean, I knew I wanted to be a three D artist, so I went to school as a three D artist. Mm -hmm. But I agree with everything you're saying. Um, make sure that as you move forward in your careers, or even in just if you're a hobbyist, you know, explore the things that you're passionate about um, because that's where your work is going to be the best and if you have questions youtube or twitch mm -hmm. or the artist community in general are your best friends mm -hmm. yeah guaranteed someone has tried to do what you're doing before and mm -hmm. there's always an artistic twist to everything on in the 3d world so you know you want to do a hot air balloon you might turn it into a marble crashing into a <laughs> miniature city instead and everybody can you know take and learn from each other to create their own work and that's what's really cool about uh, especially the 3d community i think mm -hmm. yeah absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. wendy you also so your your background is 2d right so i do uh, a lot more 2d artwork um did a lot of um android games uh, uh you know, tower defense stuff like that. Um, I I started out with 3D Mac, uh, 3DS Max, and um, it I just learned it really fast using YouTube. <laughs> and 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 there's it's just so amazing. The internet, you can find out anything you need to find out. Um, yeah, so that's. Um, mainly using Photoshop, um, Illustrator, the the two D programs. That's what I'm more familiar with. And then um, little three D assets for Android games in three uh, DS Max. <laughs> and you just, just you just actually did a cool co uh, comic the other day. Oh yeah. How many <laughs> so I I've been quickly whenever I find spare time drawing a a weekly comic for my omnivores, my community people. <laughs> um, it's it's on the forums. It's just search for omnivores. Um, I've got two of them up there right now, uh, working on one today. <laughs> Hopefully, I can get that up by the end of the 
day to day. So that's awesome. Cool. <laughs> so Jeremy, I'd love to dive into a little bit, kind of like what your process is uh, when, because uh, out of the blue the other day, you posted another image from the Marvel assets. Um, you know, had nothing to do with the contest or anything like that. But you took yeah. all the assets, I think, except for one mm -hmm. uh, item in the image, uh, and you, uh, uh, yeah. So, so I don't want to give too much away. Yeah. So you're sure. Right now. Yeah. No. Basically, uh, as soon as you guys released that Blender USD uh, branch, I I got really excited again because I had so much fun working in uh, in Omniverse, but you know, I was kind of limited to just using those marble assets because I really don't know much about USD files and, and how to make them. And I don't know how to use Maya. Uh, so when you guys released that, I was like, oh my God, I got to get back in there and do something. And so I was just clicking around old files. And this scene right here was actually going to be my like original submission piece uh, for the contest. But it, uh, I wasn't able to, I, the story wasn't there. Like I didn't know what I want to do. Like the mm -hmm. whale wasn't there. It was just a little guy on a raft and with some marbles. And I was like, no, 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 I need to do something a little, that has a little more depth to it. So I abandoned it and then I went back to it. And then I thought, oh, this could be a really good opportunity to practice bringing Blender objects um, and animations into that scene. And so, uh, yeah, I'll just open that up and show you guys what it looks like in Create. Awesome. And I did not know that. I didn't know that was your first, uh... First yeah. attempt at the marbles kind of yeah yeah it was this this little guy yep um so yeah that's uh everything here except for the cannon and this uh sail is all um omniverse stuff um so like all these are just marbles that have been squashed and stretched and skewed to look like uh like a splash um but yeah i was actually able to right before the call uh simulate and animate this little sail um, and nice. it's just so cool to see this in real time because you could you know pause it where you want to help the composition and give it a little more energy um, and then eventually you know render this out uh, you know as, a, as a, a movie file but it's just it's so mind-blowing that this is rendering in, in real time you know path traced uh, it's it's just so much fun that's wild so, so we didn't yeah. too long to animate the sail ready so uh, you just did today I did that. Uh, yeah, I think I did that. Uh, yeah, I, I did this morning. <laughs> so I had to kind of go back and teach myself how to uh, use cloth simulations again. But um, yeah, it's, uh, it's right here. And uh, this is like a little force field. This is just a mesh. Uh, you know, I have this little cloth over here, set it to silk. Um, and then yeah, I just messed around with uh, kind of key framing up the amount of turbulence I wanted from this uh, little force field. And there we go. We have a little animated sail. And then all I did is I saved that. And then I went into the uh, Blender 3.0 Alpha USD branch of the Omniverse library and opened that up. And then all I did is I just clicked on it and went into your, uh, your side panel here and exported the USD. And I forget who gave me the tip, but to export anything with uh, textures, you have to put root, root, and then root before materials down here. Um, mm. Yeah, and then selected uh, animation and the amount I wanted. And then it was just so easy. I just literally went into create and, and dragged that in there. And it was just perfect. And I hit spacebar and like magic. It was animating and fluttering, uh, you know, in this little C. So it's, it's such a cool workflow. I can't wait to, you know, get in there and, and push it to its limits. Um, That's wild. I saw, I saw Ashley nodding while you were talking. So did he do everything the way you would have done it? Yeah. Um, actually, when I first started with the Blender USD plugin, uh, that's exactly how I did it. And I ran into the same issue where it's like, oh, my textures aren't coming through. So it's, <laughs> you know, the one thing is, is just get used to copy and paste and just make sure if you put root somewhere, just put it in all three areas. Um, I usually mm -hmm. name it differently because I, I like to, in Create, I like to use the layer workflow. And so when I'm in the layer palette, if you create a different route for every character, they're kind of self-contained. And so it, it makes it easier to go through the outliner for me. So mm -hmm. when I'm in Blender, uh, for example, if I have a character, I'll probably name the route like character root. And then if I have an environment, I'll call it environment root. And then they kind of organize in the outliner really nicely for me so that I can easily group them and access them 
much easier. Uh, but yeah, same exact steps. It's really, really easy, especially if you guys are, you know, working with um, with the blender uh, physically physical <laughs> materials. Um, they just work. So that's what's really nice about it. Um, all you have to do is hit export and everything comes through. And that's really cool. Yeah, I actually, so I was having a little, I'll share this now because this is how I got around getting materials in, but I went into, uh, so I was just working on like a little can, um, and I had just like two or three uh, materials um, for the, the blender, like PVR, and then I would convert them to the Omni PVR, and mm -hmm. everything kind of disappeared. So... Uh, my way around that is to just start with the replace with Omni PBR and then go in here and apply your uh, albedo and your roughness and your metallic like you would in Blender, but just start with the Omniverse PBRs because for whatever reason like that, that gave me like the most one-to-one -one, uh, results. Uh, I'm sure down the line, everything's going to like work much faster, but this worked great. Uh, so I just, you know, went into this node tree, put in my textures for the can and and then same thing, exported it with the regroup uh, thing. And, and then, yeah, same exact situation, just drag and drop and it, like magic. Uh, the cannon was in here and I was able to move it around and it's all separate. Uh, this was cool too. I didn't expect it to separate the, the layers that I had in Blender. So that was really exciting to see. Um, everything was on its own little, uh, yeah, layer. In but, Create, there's a, uh, well, you do have model select mode, it looks like. I was going to say, there should be a way for you to select just the primitive and then the whole model. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, um, uh, right, like, so, okay, so Canon would be the whole model, and then... Yeah, but you should be able to do it in the viewport, too. So, okay, cool. Interesting. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, so the workflow's been pretty, pretty cool so far. I haven't yeah. really run into any critical errors or so, issues. I, I just want to let's take a look at this whale because there's some comments in the chat. They're like, "Is that a whale?" <laughs> <laughs> Splashing it's my out. To, yeah, a whale being made from a uh, one of your ink bottles. <laughs> yeah, I had to squash and stretch him to get him looking. Yeah, oh, Gav did a quick drawing yesterday. I mean, we're oh my god, yeah. Wait, we'll do you that. have it? Do you have it handy? Oh uh, yeah, I definitely <laughs> do. <laughs> Yeah, let me uh, pop. There we go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> love, love that guy, yeah. Uh-huh. But, uh, yeah, so that's what I've been up to. Um, I don't really know what's next or, you know, next project, but um, whatever I end up doing, I'm absolutely going to be seeing how I can, uh, you know, incorporate this uh, create program into my, like, daily blender uh, work life because again just lighting uh, in real time is just so so much fun like I'll show you what like a uh, distant sunlight looks like uh, and now all you have to do is just import it in and you get a chance to just relight the whole scene immediately like if I had to do this in Blender like I could do it in cycles but it it just wouldn't be as comfortable it would take right. a little bit longer and then again um, oh my god re rendering blew my mind I don't think I told you this anymore but <laughs> I, I was in my uh, my little camera view, and I was like, yeah, this looks great. I might just screen grab this. And I was like, wait, wait, wait let me go into movie capture mode. And so I went in here, and I just was like, oh, like, uh, I don't know, 700 samples seems good. And I set it to 700 samples, which, again, like, I don't think it's a one-to-one -one comparison, but it, it rendered in, f like, four seconds. And the quality of it was so crisp and so good. Like, maybe I can upload that somewhere for people to see. Um, but the fact that it rendered that scene in like seconds where I think a cycles render would have taken a minimum of, you know, a couple minutes, like at least three or four. And that, that's like a generous estimate. It's uh, it's it's just crazy. So yeah, I really want to try and render off this with uh, the fluttering sail and, and see what kind of quality I can get and how long that takes next. That's so awesome. Um, yeah. So yes, yeah, so are you going to continue working on this, uh, this scene? Um, I don't know. I feel like this scene, uh, it feels kind of, finished like if i like maybe one thing i could could do but again i i don't do too much simulation i think it would be cool to kind of animate the marbles as like waves um oh, yeah. so that that was a possibility i thought that could be cool maybe um, some sparkles some water sparkles yeah 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 uh 
so yeah i don't know that that was that was like my last idea for the scene but i kind of like it as far as like a, a composition and that looks uh, a sketch yeah but it's very cool and when, once again the same the same kind of uh reaction uh on our team when we saw it that wow how the how did someone take those assets we gave uh <laughs> and, and make these uh make these amazing scenes it's really uh really incredible yeah and, i think it's like incredible from technical perspective but also from a creative uh you know, creative and how you can, you see things in, in things that I think, um, you know, most, most non artists probably wouldn't see. Yeah. I, I think working within, like, you know, there's the saying, like, think outside of the box. But I think when you are forced to think inside of a box, you get a lot more creative. Mm. And, and like, for example, like, like the splashing over here, uh, it, it was just like, oh, how can I simulate like a splash? And I thought, okay, well, these marbles, you know, I can squash and stretch them. And so instead, like if I were doing this in Blender, I probably would have gone in and tried to like use the, the fluid simulation and went down this crazy rabbit hole of doing like a, a, a water simulation. But because I couldn't do that in Create, uh, I just thought, oh, well, I'll just like tweak all of these things individually to make it look uh, like a splash. So yeah, I, I think having some limitations sometimes is a, is a helpful thing. Yeah, it makes you a lot more creative. This is also a really good example of because a lot of times when we talk about Omniverse and how it can impact different industries, mm -hmm. how it already is, um, we talk about the collaborative part portion of, of what it offers and the, the fact that different developers can work on it together using mm -hmm. their different apps at the same time in the same scene um, in real time. But this is a great example of like the benefits just for an individual, uh, you know, being able to take an existing app that they love and being able to kind of um, maximize it or add, add some functionality to it, um, make it make their vision a little bit more, um, you know, uh, powerful. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, so in the in the future, like, where, where do you see yourself going? Uh, you know, as a as an artist, like where what's next on your your horizon? Um, are, uh -huh. you, are you going to stay in the Blender world? Are you going to be venturing out into? Uh, uh, I think we talked about Houdini um, uh, mm -hmm. or other other apps. Yeah, uh, I think it really depends on what uh, what sort of uh, freelance or you know full time work is in store for me in the future. Mm -hmm. um, I love learning, so you know I thought Houdini would would be a really fun uh, next program to learn because it's, you know, the stuff that I see people do with Houdini really blow my mind. And Marvelous Designer is another really cool program. Like I, I really like fashion and I think it would be cool to design, you know, simulate cloth in a more realistic way. Um, so those are two programs I'm very interested in, but uh, I'm also interested in, you know, kind of making my, my own stories come to life. And uh, like I said, I, uh, you know, I wrote a couple, I wrote a screenplay a while ago for like a VR animation. And so I think it could be a good time now that I don't have a house to renovate uh, or a wedding to plan. It could be you know, a good opportunity to kind of focus on that again, see if I can't get a chance to like direct my own uh, little films or whatnot, because that's kind of a, the, the dream for me is to write and direct some stories. And, that's awesome. So do you do you visualize uh, these as solo projects uh, in the near future? Or this is something you probably need a team to help with? Uh, yeah, probably. I, I think a team would be ideal because I, I've worked, I've tried to finish enough projects to know that it is just really hard to, to keep that momentum up um, by yourself, uh, especially when you have to you know, work and uh, live your life. And I just, yeah, ideally, I'd like to work with uh, some people on, on a project in the future. <clears throat> so, Misi, you mentioned uh, yesterday uh, that animation is not your not your kind of focus. So, would you be looking for animators? You could do a, a shout out to. Uh, a call for... <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 definitely would need some help with. Uh, yeah, need some animators and riggers. And, um, that's really my big weak weak spot. I, I worked on a, a big uh, animation project for uh, ten cent. It was a, a PUBG commercial, and uh, yeah, I had a chance to build this uh, really cool like skyscraper from scratch. So I had to learn all about architectural design, um, and then uh, we built a bunch of other cool props. Like we designed the interior of 
this like big lobby and this cool helipad. Um, and then actually on that same project, uh, I was responsible for texturing and lighting uh, this animation. And I wow. just learned so, so much from that project that I, I really feel like I, I have a great sense for what the pipeline is. And I, and I know that uh, riggers and animators are invaluable. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just stuff that I can't do and I don't think I would even be good at it. But um, yeah, I'd love to, I mean, I met a couple great people on this project, but always willing to, to meet and talk to other, you know, individuals looking to collaborate on, on some stuff. Yeah, so feel free. If anyone's uh, watching this, uh, Jeremy's on our Discord all the time, so you can always chat mm -hmm. with him there. We have a showcase channel. We could show up your stuff. We have a looking for teams channel. Yeah, um, we could post your stuff. But I'm curious. So how did uh, ten, that ten ten uh, project is pretty cool? Um, mm -hmm. It's one of the biggest uh, IPs for gaming. What mm -hmm. uh, uh, in PUBG? What is uh, what was the pro how did they get in touch with you? Did they just discover you online or? Um. I forget how that happened. So it was uh, this studio called Impetus. Um, and they were basically looking to start, um, it was a couple people from DreamWorks looking to start their own animation studio. And they reached out to see if I'd be interested in helping them start a studio. And so we got talking and, uh, you know, got, and we worked together for about six months to try and uh, bring this story to life. Um, and uh, yeah, we did. It was a it was a bit of a tight budget and a tight deadline, and we all wore multiple hats. But if you want to check it out, you can uh, go to impetusanimation.com, and there's a the trailer that we got to make um, is up here. And uh, yeah, I won't I won't uh, show the whole thing on stream, but uh, there's some cool cool fight scenes. Um, you know, and it's a good uh, good. I think we all got a good little demo demo reel out of it at the, at the least. Um, so yeah. that's wild. And do you, is is your art station a good place for um, to get make new contacts? Do you get people reach out to you through there a lot? Or yeah, I think uh, Instagram is typically where I'm most active, and even then, I'm not all that that active on social media. Um, I uh, yeah, I just this past year has really just been uh, working on on the house. But now that I have some, my, I feel like I have my life back. I'm I have time to make cool projects like this. Um, so definitely Instagram is where I, I'm most active. So if you uh, want to reach out or chat with me, it's there. Or uh, Discord would be a good spot. Um, oh, there's your, there's your GPU prize. Yeah, yeah, I got that. Uh, <laughs> like I signed uh, GPU. Oh, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, it really has helped uh, the workflow tremendously, uh, being able to, uh, you know, upgrade because I was using, I mean, it's not a, a good GPU from before, but it's a very noticeable uh, increase, especially when working with and create. Uh, I was able to, before when I was navigating this scene, it was getting a little sluggish, um, but I popped it back open and it was running. Like, what, you said, what did you use when you when you uh, did that scene? I think before? I used a 2080 is what I was using before. Um, so, yeah, well, I think it was like, yeah, one of the first gen uh, RTX cards. Um, but, yeah. Oh, and then, yeah, I think I did a little fly through. Um, you can check this out on Instagram to kind of see what the set looked like. Oh it's so God. funny because this just looks like a, a miniature set. Like it really does look like this was built in someone's, you know, garage or, or in a studio totally. somewhere. I, I didn't see this. This is I wild. I just love this scene so much. <laughs> I, yeah. I know I had said before, but it, it's like, it it make, gives me a feeling of like playing with toys again. Um. Yeah. That, <laughs> Well, that's exactly yeah. what it felt like while I was doing this project. I just felt like I was playing with Legos or like little characters and props. It's it's such a treat to be able to do all this in real time. Um, and I think that's the charm of it. It's like when the lighting feels so natural, that's when you really start to feel like you're looking at a, a foot like a photo. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, I know a lot of people who saw this. I heard ex a pretty common feedback like, wow, this looks like a Pixar. Uh, mm -hmm. Pixar type of uh, film or movie poster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was the, that was the goal. Took, I, I definitely watched a bunch of Pixar films before working on the project and took screen grabs and uh, had a bunch of lighting reference to try and lock in like a big, you know, grand, uh, you know, scene or like a, a moment. You know, uh, spent quite. I, I think I spent a week just nudging things left and right and left and right to make sure everything <laughs> could read as well as possible. 
I was going to ask. So what uh, what were you kind of most surprised about? Because that was the first time you worked with Create, obviously, mm -hmm. um, in Omniverse. What uh, what was surprising to you? Uh, I mean, right away, the the rendering was like I, I that I can't talk enough about how cool it is to see the lighting effects in real time. Um, but I think the fact that I was just duplicating and duplicating and duplicating like hundreds of pastels and popsicle sticks and and never like not until the very end did it even start to show signs of slowing down so like the whole time i'm like copying and pasting these huge house houses like huge in the sense of like they're really dense with meshes um and textures like all of it was like super 4k and um yeah the fact that i could just copy and paste that like i love blender to get to death and it's it's my go-to but it it one of its uh issues is like it cannot handle big scenes very well and mm -hmm. so I think that was like the really big contrasty moment, like, uh, oh my God, this is such a great program for making a big scene. And I think this piece right here does a good job. Like in, in Blender, if you were to render this out, you would might you might want to separate the houses and the characters. You might want to composite it um, be because of like the limitations of the scene and how heavy it would get. But in this program, you know, you can do it all. You can, it's everything can be flattened and, and you can render it so fast um and at such a high quality in real again in real time um so yeah that was probably the, the biggest thing for me uh was that i can I imagine add, oh go ahead oh no i was gonna say like what kind of the what kind of other tips and tricks for blender like to make something like that work in blender you just gave mm -hmm. a couple head do uh, either of you know any other tricks that you would do to try yeah. to make it like that work make it work in blender like you'd probably want to instance as much stuff as you could and instancing you guys you guys do that in there too um but it's basically you're kind of getting like three um real estate when it comes to meshes you're like copying making copies of them actually uh this is a great example of what instancing is so this is a i, I don't know the idea was like uh, it's kind of morbid uh you these people are living in space and when you die instead of just being turned into dust you you get turned into fertilizer and you're just you're being used to feed uh, these plants. And so <laughs> this scene is actually just one one box. And the box is just duplicated several times. But uh, the scene is only uh, taking up one box's memory, basically. Uh, it's, a, it's a weird thing to describe. So you're able to copy these for free and, and light them and, and move them around. And it's not taxing your system anymore. And so to like make this scene a little lighter, I would probably try and instance or copy uh, as much as I could, um, like all these little ink bottles, for example, or you know the windows or parts of the buildings that you could you know get away with. So, so I think instancing would be great. So I have a question because you keep uh, talking about rendering, how amazing it is. How much time does it cut out of your, you know, normal production time to have oh a scene God. render? A, so at full quality in a few seconds. It, <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I wouldn't even exaggerate when I would say like um, it would save like like more more than hours like it would save days so like yeah. in in this animation right here like I was just telling you guys before all this started um, we had such a tight deadline like I had to light uh, this scene right here in like all of these sequences we had like two weeks to render the entire animation. And so when I was lighting this, I wasn't able to see what I was doing. So I had to do little render regions just on areas to be like, okay, her her back is lit well enough. She's reading, the building is reading and I'd have to move on. And we didn't get a chance to really see what the final, uh, I, I honestly didn't know what any of this looked like until they released the trailer. I just crossed my fingers and hoped, uh, <laughs> like, I hope it turned out all right. Um, and thankfully I had been working in Blender like so much for so long that I was able to kind of guess my way around it. But I think all of this could have looked so much more interesting had I been able to see what I was doing. And again, like, you know, and in uh, Omniverse, you get to see immediately what you're doing. Um, and, and I love lighting so, so much. I, like, it's my favorite thing to do. It's like that the, the, the fun really starts. Like after all the hard work of modeling and designing and planning, and setting up your scene when you get to the lighting it's kind of like this stress reliever it's you're like reaping <laughs> the benefits of all the hard work prior to it 
it, and so it, to get a chance to light it immediately is just the best feeling like I, it's so great yeah it, it makes it fun I, I know we had talked mm -hmm. before i was talking about how awful it was to do lighting in 3ds max i i it was just not fun and mm -hmm. how much more more fun it is in omniverse it's it's no longer a, oh i gotta light the scene it's like yay <laughs> <laughs> yes it, that's exactly how it feels yep oh man but yeah having a blast with it for sure oh uh, i do want to share a, a shout out to blender for anybody who's working on their home uh we bought a house and i immediately was like we gotta knock down this wall because it's like a cave and so i went into blender we started measuring out uh all of the parts of the house and figuring out what the house could look like and eventually we ended up just dragging in textures and figuring out exactly how we wanted our house to look in blender and it was such a fun process because we got to see you know way before we made any decisions about doing tile or uh texturing you know painting the cabinets etc uh and it makes remodeling so nice so anybody who's looking to remodel their home or do any kind of work uh throw it into blender first because you will save yourself such a headache um, that looks amazing, that was amazing. Cool. yeah did you use the archi did you use the archi plugin for that in the add-ons at all no i didn't even know that was a thing oh I, yeah I, so they in the add-ons they have a really cool archi plugin i think it's called archi Cool. Um, I just type in ARC and mm -hmm. there's some really cool stuff like you can easily drag walls, put oh in God. windows, add uh, cabinetry and shelves like the geometry. That so it's actually so really fun. Easier. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, <laughs> listen, listen to Ashley, everybody. Yeah. It looks so cool. Yeah. Cool. But yeah. Where's the cat? Where's the, uh, <laughs> there's gotta be a cat over here. They're always in these photos. Uh, oh, that's our, that's my, that's my that's office. That's where you are. <laughs> <laughs> that's my office. Yeah, that's my wife. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, uh, but cats, there's, hey. oh, this is a, when you said you had a nibble on. Yes. This is my nibble on. This, this is wizard. This guy who has been in my lap this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Cute. laughs> oh, my God. But, yeah. Adorable. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so on, on, on the Blender stuff, uh, mm -hmm. Ashley, is there any kind of advice you can give other people that are maybe just starting with uh, trying Blender with Omniverse uh, that might help them kind of get started on the right foot? Um, I mean, honestly, everything was covered. Uh, Jeremy did a really good job. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, Create supports USD and FBX. But if you really want to get the most out of your scenes, definitely try downloading the Omniverse uh, Blender version, which is on the um, Omniverse. Uh, you can go onto the Omniverse website and actually pick up the Omniverse launcher and you can get it from there. And USD is really, really cool because it's it was developed by Pixar to make transferring files a lot easier. This has always been a challenge in 3D. And so if you want to get started in Blender, um, when you want to take your assets to create or to Unreal or to any place, I definitely suggest giving uh, the USD exporter a try and testing out all of the cool features there because it does save you a lot of time. Um, and honestly, work in Blender like you would work in any 3D app. Have fun designing and creating new things and you know, let the plugin take care of the hard work for you. Yeah, I, I, so I, the USD topic is an important one because a lot of Omniverse just wouldn't be possible without it, obviously. Um, it's basically the, the glue that kind of keeps all everything uh, connected together. Um, and uh, I think we're going to do a, a live stream specifically on USD. Uh, oh, cool. so, so we'll have a, a nice, we definitely have some tutorials and talks on them already on our YouTube channel. But I think it'd be fun to take questions um, and talk about workflows and how it different is, is it, uh, I mean, what would you say is the biggest difference from working with USD from, from like FBX or other file formats? So USD is faster. Um, and it's also, it's, USD stands for universal scene description. And so basically it takes any, any app that uses USD, it has their own way of understanding how 3D models work, right? But at the end of the day, at the core of it, whether you're working in Max or Maya or Blender, 3D meshes are made up of points or vert vertices. And so what USD does a really good job of is 
giving it giving a definition to what a vertice is or a point on a mesh and then also saying hey you want to assign a texture to this you want to have these things and just creating a way that any application can read it so mm -hmm. i like to think almost like usd this is very simplified but when i think of usd i think of it as like a pdf anybody can read a pdf it's the pdf for 3d whereas when you're working with fbx you know, it might be more closely related to a PSD or, or a PSB file where maybe you have to have a certain application to get it to open properly, or you might have to do a little extra work. USD kind of takes away all of that, makes it universal, and it's written in a way that also kind of unlocks the potential for collaboration because these files are highly optimized. So that's that's why Pixar developed it, right? So that they could actually transfer content around quickly and like with accuracy. And what's really cool about it is because it's written in this this format, uh, our developers or any developer can really take that information and uh, break it apart and put it back together. And that's what enables things like collaboration in Omniverse as well. So USD is really, really cool. And uh, it's supported in a lot of apps. Um, if you're using vanilla Blender, you can export USD, but if you use our Omniverse Blender, you can also import USD. So what's really cool is you can take your scene or pieces of your scene that you built in Blender and you can export them and build out all of your lighting and all of that into Create. But maybe if you want to continue animating or you want to continue building out things, you can take that Create scene and you can export it as a USD and re-import it into Blender and then animate certain assets and bring them back in and back back and forth, back and forth. And that's what's really, really cool about um, USD. And as we move forward with Omniverse, I'm really excited to see how things go because we're going to see so much more support across all different apps for USD and everybody's going to have the access to 3D files like we hoped that we would have, you know, access to images or illustrations, you know? Being able to see a JPEG is taken for granted, I think, because you can see it everywhere. And I think with USD, we have the potential to see 3D scenes everywhere and anywhere as well. So it's really exciting. That's awesome. That's a great way to explain it. And mm -hmm. I guess it, it, you mentioned this earlier, but just to make it super clear for anyone who may have missed that point, it's important to grab the Blender, which is in the Omniverse launcher, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, you can definitely, uh, in Blender today, you can definitely export USD, but it's limited. And if you want to have access to a lot more uh, features and you also want to import USD from other files or other applications or projects, definitely grab this version because that's the way you'll be able to do it. And, and it's really nice because you can start to build a back and forth workflow between any application, really. If you wanted to go from Omniverse to Unreal, we have an Unreal connector. I'm sorry, Omniverse to Unreal. If you wanted to go from Blender to Unreal, we have an Unreal connector that you can take advantage of and use USD for. So you can create stuff in Blender, bring it into Unreal, pop it back into Blender, take it to create. And that's what's really, really cool about this, this ecosystem. So definitely I recommend um, getting it, trying it out because there are so many cool little features and tools that can help any of your workflows and whatever you guys decide to do, whatever apps you're comfortable with, there's a way to get the content that you want where you need it. And that's what's really cool. Yeah, that's wild. Um, and uh, so the one thing we should mention, because Wendy's here uh, and she's our form queen. So have you seen a lot of, uh, since we uh, Blender uh, was announced and released uh, through Omniverse uh, and, and greater support even outside of Omniverse, uh, have you seen a lot of uptick in people kind of working with Blender on the forums? Um, I, so we, um, we got a lot of uh, community members saying, we want Blender, where's Blender? Um, and we actually reprioritized the apps we were developing because of what the community wanted. Um, and we focused on Blender. And when that release came out, um, we got a lot of people on social media, on the forums, everyone's just super excited. Um, Blender is a wonderful <laughs> tool and everybody in the community uses it. it and um, I mean, it's, it's free to use, so it's accessible to anyone. Um, and having that available on Omniverse um, and 
with all of our NVIDIA tools and technology available to render out your scenes from Blender. Uh, we've got a lot of community uh, members very excited and I can't wait for them to share what they're doing. So if you, anyone who's watching, if you have something you're working on um, from Blender, uh, you render it out in Omniverse, send it to us. Um, we we want to see it. We're excited to see it. And do you, do you so uh, what do you think is the next biggest request? Is it Houdini or? Houdini is, it, it is yeah. number two on the list. Um, uh -huh. A lot of people want um, the procedural, uh, benefits that Houdini creates. And then after that, um, a lot of people are saying substance designer, substance painter. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, those are, we have, we have a large development list. Um, and, um, we're not, we're not a big team we're a small team, but we do things right. We make sure that it works before we release it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I know, I know that, um, Houdini and Substance are the, the two main ones from the community, what, what they're looking forward to. That's awesome. And uh, Jeremy, do you have any special requests for the Omniverse team? Oh, man, my, my number one request, and I've already told you guys this, is multiple viewports. Like, I know that's coming, but <laughs> yeah, I, I, I want to let everybody know that they have assured me that it is coming. Uh, because when it I was is. making this scene, yeah, I was like, oh, man, I want to move uh, these splashes around. But I couldn't uh, do it properly. So all of them are just floating in space that look good from one point of view. Yeah. Right. Uh, so once the viewport <laughs> gets updated, uh, then every everything uh, that you move around in here will be, you know, more, more cohesive. And then the next thing I'm excited about is uh, a Blender Bridge. And I think mm -hmm. Ashley said that might be coming, but it would be really cool to just work in Blender and then have Omniverse open in another window or something you could just kind of refresh to to see uh, everything in real time without going through the USD step. So I don't know mm -hmm. if that's, you know, where that is on the horizon, if that's how it's going to work. But in my mind, that would be a really cool workflow um, to just have both things running simultaneously. Um, but yeah, other than that, like, I love the program and, and I know you guys are still like a small team and it's early, but like I haven't had a crash um, at all since whatever this this version is. Um, I had a couple crashes during the contest, but uh, it's been very stable for the last several releases. So um, yeah, no, no complaints. I know it's been a big focus on the development team, yeah. which is stability, you know, and uh, it can be tempting uh, as a development team for games or otherwise to just tack on features and stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think for us, it's really it's really critical that the users have a stable, um, a stable platform environment to work in because that that could be just um, features don't work don't mean anything if if, if it keeps crashing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. absolutely. <laughs> Same for us. I see that you asked a really interesting question about um, using exactly why you would use Omniverse um, because you render your scenes in cycles. I think that cycles is an amazing render. And there are big benefits to using cycles over other renderers or to choose the renderer that works best for you. But if you want to have a really fast render, an interactive experience, if you want to have interactive lighting or, you know, you are new to, to Blender and you are new to 3D, Create is a great place to start because it's so easy to light things and to work on things without having to think about the technical aspects that sometimes come with larger uh, production style renderers like Cycles or Redshift or V-Ray. These renderers are absolutely amazing, but sometimes the barrier to entry can be higher. And like um, we heard uh, from Jeremy is they do take a little bit longer. And sometimes it's nice to be able to move back and forth. And so Create can allow you to really build out your scenes and to light them interactively. But of course, you know, the goal is that you would be able to do all of that and create. And if you ever wanted to go into Cycles or into V-Ray or into Redshift, you know, the goal with Omniverse is that one day you're going to be able to take whatever you make and create and you can render it in a production style renderer if you wanted to. And you can get the benefits of any renderer or any workflow that, that you can imagine. So, you know, that's the benefit right now is just 
faster renderer, faster visualization, interactive, you know, support for your scenes. And it just really helps you develop and build out your concepts and ideas. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And I, I just want to kind of piggyback on that. Uh, like in Cycles, you you can render something out and there's a compositor afterward mm -hmm. where you can do like color grading and basically yep. kind of Photoshopping uh, your stuff. But you can do that in here in real time. So like I, the original version of this looked very kind of warm and yellow. And I just went into the color grading section and I was basically able to do compositing. And the thing is like, it's not like a post thing. Like in, in, in Blender, you would have to render it. And in order to see the results, you have to render it. But with this, like you're able to navigate it with the post processing on. And that's just another thing that you really wouldn't be able to do um, in Blender. And there's so much you can do like in this area, like the color grading is like the tip of the iceberg. There's a bunch of other really cool stuff that I, I got into a little more in my like Western house, house tutorial. Um, so I, I went over a couple more settings in here and forgot them. Otherwise I would kind of demo, uh, demo <laughs> them out. But yeah, I love the post-processing feature in here too. Yeah, that play, that tutorial is up on our YouTube channel that Jeremy put together. Really, really nice. Showed how to do the scene um, and explained everything really nicely. So people should definitely check that out. Um, I'm seeing this, so, so, someone in the chat is called Omni Dream. I want to know who that is because that is oh, Omen Dream. Omen Dream. Oh. Omen Dream. Oh. <laughs> but Omni Dream would be pretty cool, mm -hmm. um, which actually reminds me. So one thing, uh, and it's great to talk about this with Jeremy here uh, because uh, we talked about this at the user group a couple weeks ago at Seagraph, uh, which is just the, our first user group meeting. Uh, it's all virtual right now. Eventually, it'll definitely be physical, but um, we're going to have another one soon we'll announce, uh, but we're going to have them pretty regularly. And the whole idea of the user group meetings is to, for the community to be able to directly engage and talk with us and answer questions, and we can share uh, what's coming on the roadmap and give some demos. We also invite uh, the community to show off any kind of workflows and project that they want to share with the, with others. Um, so part of that uh, uh, presentation, we talked about a little bit about uh, an insiders program, which is basically we're looking for people in the community who are just a, a, just a positive force who are helping to make it a great place to be, whether it's on the forums or on Discord or on, on social media, people who are just really nice and helpful. Um, and then as part of that, some of the, uh, we're, we're going to um, identify those those insiders and there'll be some rewards and perks. But part of evolution of that is also going to be some of those people may be ambassadors for Omniverse. Uh, and those are people who are kind of experts also in one or more areas of Omniverse and are helping to tell that story and share the knowledge. Um, so we're always looking for people in the community that are doing interesting things with Omniverse. Uh, so anytime you have examples, jump on our forums or Discord and share them. Uh, we're constantly looking uh, right now for uh, insiders, and there's definitely an insider here in this room. I can't announce it yet, but he's, he's here. Uh, <laughs> um, um, but I think uh, I think it's going to be a really exciting time over the next few months. Um, and uh, I know we're we're getting in full swing for our planning for GTC, so it's going to be some exciting stuff. We're going to do some show and tells there. So, is there anything else anybody wanted to add? Lars Monkey asked a question about when he would choose to use this tool over other tools. I think it's really important um, to note that Omniverse is more than just create. There are connectors for Unreal Engine, there are connectors for Maya, and there are connectors for Blender. At the end of the day, the goal of Omniverse is to create or to create a connection between all of your apps. I'm sure you're aware, but sometimes when you have to make something in Maya, it can be hard to translate the animation and the textures and everything from Maya into Blender if you choose to use Blender. And the same can be true if you choose to go from Blender to Unreal Engine. And so one of the big benefits of Omniverse and the, the launcher is that we provide connectors that take away that, that headache and the way that it does that is it leverages USD, which is basically a universal scene description format. And it basically takes away the headache of having to convert all those scenes. So you can use Create for all of your visualizations like Jeremy has done here, but you can also take advantage of all of the wonderful other tools we have and connectors to actually enhance your workflow and work with the tools that you're most comfortable with. So, you know, you do not have to use Create for all of your scene and for final frame rendering, you can if you want to. 
but you can also take advantage of the Maya connector, the Unreal connector, and all the other connectors that we are working on now that we plan on having come to, to this launcher in the future. You can take advantage of those just to make your workflow easier and to move between apps quicker. So there are so many benefits to using it. And it, and that's what's really cool about it is it doesn't have to just be create. You know, you can go from Maya to Blender really easily and render in anything you want. That's the goal. Yeah, and we, we also have a couple of interesting apps that were added uh, not too long ago. Audio yeah. Face, mm -hmm. which lets you basically apply audio and auto automatically animate. Uh, the face to match the audio. That's it's so neat. Um, and then the other one is Machinima, uh, which basically everyone's anyone's probably familiar with Machinima, but lets you basically use assets and create cool uh, movies, uh, animations, trailers, or just your own stories. And that's pretty uh, funny. We've done a couple of live streams on that. Um, so yeah, those so there's a lot of cool stuff you could do in Omniverse, um, even without connectors. There's uh, some built-in apps that you can take advantage of. So definitely, definitely check out the launcher. Uh, and then you go to the exchange and you can uh, actually, there's a great tab in there for learning. Uh, so you can kind of dive in and sort by subject. There's lots of cool content. Uh, also on our YouTube channel, but you can get it right from the launcher as well. Um, oh, cool. And then we have a news news tab also to find out the latest. So sometimes people ask, how do I find out what's coming next or what, what's, what just came out? So the news tab is where you'd want to do that. There you go. Um, yeah, so Jeremy, I cannot thank you enough. Uh, uh, you know, you've, uh, you're, I think I told somebody in an email chat, if I get married again, you will get an invitation to be my best man. I, hope you I, I, I do accept. I'd be happy to. <laughs> that would be awesome. you're, you're such a, you're such a, a great, uh, great artist, uh, very creative, um, very inspiring. Um, and you're, you, you know, obviously you're sharing uh, what you know with others, I think, which is awesome. I'm so excited to see what you do next. Um, and, uh, you know, we're with you as every step of the way. Yeah. Uh, and I will definitely, I will pay to see this movie made. <laughs> I think this would Absolutely. be a <laughs> All right. Let's, uh, um, let's, forget, let's uh, start a Kickstarter. Let's, let's go. <laughs> let's go totally for it. it. <laughs> um, and of course, Ashley, thank you so much for joining us on your first NVIDIA Omniverse live stream. Such an honor. Yeah. <laughs> Thank no you worries. so much. Yeah. <laughs> it was really fun to just get to see Jeremy's journey. Um, I think it's really, really cool to go oh. from 2D to 3D and to see that mm. like it's amazing artwork and it, like uh, such an amazing visual storytelling. <laughs> like it's oh, crazy you. what you've been able to do. So. Thank you so much. Yeah. I thank agree. you guys so much for having me. I really, everybody over at NVIDIA has just been so warm, helpful and uh, join, join the uh, the Discord server because it's it's a blast. It's really cool to get to interact with all you guys, you know, every day and, and talk about this great new program that you're working on. It's my favorite part of the day, <laughs> just yeah. getting on Discord and talking with all of you. <laughs> oh, we have one, one more question before we close out. Um, it gets a follow up. So, are you saying I can use Omniverse to open the attic scene with materials in Blender? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. There you go. I think I did that yes, already, actually. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Um, the way that the, the Omniverse connectors work is that they help to bring materials and objects over. So yeah, basically anything that's created in Omniverse should work inside of Blender or inside of Maya. That's the magic of the connectors. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure <laughs> Jeremy's trying to show you because I think he's done it. But um, that's the magic of them, right? Is that you aren't pigeonholed into one workflow or one place to work. You can work on in any app that makes you comfortable, or you can work with people that work in different apps. Like a good example would be um, uh, Jeremy, if he's not, you know, the best animator or he wants to get an animator or rigger, he's not stuck to saying, hey, I need an animator or rigger in Blender. He can choose an animator or rigger that's best for the style that he's going for, and he can merge those content together, irregardless of if the animator or rigger is working in 3ds Max or Maya. Um, and that's something that's really, really cool because it just opens up the the opportunity artists have to collaborate together. Sometimes when you're working with other artists, you're kind of stuck to a specific suite of tools. And, you know, that can be hard because uh, it just limits your opportunity in the pool of 
growth you have and um, when you're able to connect with people in apps that you normally wouldn't use or that maybe you don't have as much knowledge in, but you can still take advantage of all the wonderful things they can do and you guys can work together. That's what's really magical about Omniverse and the connectors. So Well said. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so uh, so that probably wraps up this stream. So thank you, everybody. Uh, and we'll be back in uh, one week. Uh, so next Wednesday, uh, probably the same time. Uh, so uh, so until then, hop on our forums, come on the Discord server, come hang out with us. Uh, and, uh, and thank you. Thanks, everybody. Cool, yeah. Thanks, guys. See everybody later.